This is why I wanted to discuss this game. In this position, white has a beautiful prophylaxis bishop move. This game is between John Ems and John Cox. I spoke to John Ems at a coaching day and I asked what he was doing with one of his groups and he mentioned this Philidor game. I had never seen this idea before so I wanted to make a video covering this game. Stay tuned to find out what white plays in this position. Let's take it from the top. e4, e5, knight f3, d6, d4, we have a Philidor. Take, take, g6, knight c3, bishop g7, bishop e3, knight f6, queen d2. If the c-pawn was an e-pawn, this would be a dragon. Castle, castle, knight c6, f3. Yugoslav attack structure. White will go g4, h4, h5. Black will attack on the queen side. Maybe a6, b5, maybe bishop d7, or what actually happened in the game. Knight takes d4, bishop takes d4, bishop e6. Black now has a threat of playing c5 and getting some quick counterplay. For example, if you played a quiet move like king b1, perhaps c5 looks good. Take, take, if you're trying to grab a pawn, there really is no point. After queen a5, there should be compensation. That's why in this position, after bishop d4, bishop e6, John just chose to retreat this bishop. Even though it looks amazing on d4, it is important to stop black's counterattack. So volunteer to just get out the way with this nice prophylaxis move, bishop e3. An idea I had never seen before. 40 games in the chess 24 database. Here is just a table showing some of the 40 games. Bishop e3 and now a6. A6 is planning b5. Bishop h6, a dragon with no c file. It's a nice strategy to get rid of this bishop on g7. Black now played take, allowing the white queen to come in, but was there a better option? Maybe. b5 was also possible. Maybe it is better to not let the white queen come in. h4. This is an important move to not take on g7 because you give black the option to play pawn to h5. What do I mean after take, take? If you go h4, I think black has some defensive resources after h5. The attack is not so obvious. So if you stop black's attack with a3, queen, e7, maybe black's doing okay. If you try g4 instead, b4, knight, d5, a5, you could go h4, but maybe h5 is possible here as well. Or maybe you could take and then go h5. Just trying to stop white's attack. Queen d4, maybe king out the way. White still has a nice position, but the attack in the game was more convincing. So back to this position after h4, b4, take, take, and now knight e2, which we will see in the game. a5, h5, the attack is just crashing through. In this position, black has a nice defensive resource, which highlights maybe his position isn't so bad, but it's quite creative. It's really about moving this knight out the way. Later, we will see knight d7. The point of this is to guard h6, but also give black the chance to go g5 to block off the h file. That's why in this position, you could play uh, capture this. You could capture on g6 just to stop this option. Knight d4, queen e7, and after bishop b5, white has a nice position. Bishop controls e8. White's knight is better than black's. White can continue the uh, attack. After h5, you do not want to play knight takes h5 because you crash through. g4, knight f6, and queen h6 check. The attack is just too quick. The rook on d1 is now very useful. Move the king back and e5. Here we highlight the fact f6 is needed to defend h7, and with this e5 move, white is just crashing through. You cannot take because your queen will be hanging. Back to the game, bishop takes h6 played, allowing the white queen to come in. Now why did black allow this? Perhaps it's because of his next move, queen e7. Move the rook on f8, maybe to d8, to c8, b8. Queen to f8, trying to get rid of white's dangerous queen. h4, the attack begins, b5, h5, b4. And here, knight e2, as we saw in the above variation. We won't look at knight d5 because knight e2 is just so strong. And bishop c4 played in the game. Let's check out another defensive try, which is knight d7. We saw this before. Knight g8 was the option, but the same idea, maybe go g5 next. The idea is to block off the h file by giving g5 as an option, so let's stop that by capturing on g6. Take, 
and now white has the option knight d4 f4 let's put it on f4 because you give yourself the option knight g6 later but also there's another move coming up which is very nice rook f7 you need to defend against mate you can't just move the bishop back because queen h7 is your checkmate so what if rook f7 is black holding on uh, maybe first thing to point out is knight g6 doesn't work because of queen f6 you can't move the knight back hoping for this and then bishop and knight are hanging no you do not hope for this because after knight f4 queen takes f4 check knight f4 rook f7 and a really cool move here which is why i wanted to go through this variation rather than playing knight d4 white can try rook d4 giving the option to play bishop c4 also attacking the b4 pawn this pawn was intended as a queenside attacker but now it is a weakness let's have a look at a few variations knight e5 might be the best so let's have a look at a5 and c5 first a5 loses on the spot because rook on d4 protects the c4 square so knight takes e6 we're crashing through queen takes bishop c4 it's all over if c5 then knight takes g6 is the stunning move now we ask ourselves what is the difference between this and the other variation why doesn't queen f6 work now because the c5 pawn is no longer on c7 wow a subtle difference giving white the option to play rook takes d6 and we see the bishop on e6 is hanging if you go queen takes g6 you could swap off queens or you could rub it in you could go rook takes e6 take advantage of the fact that there's an x-ray on the sixth rank take take y is winning finally the last option knight e5 which guards c4 and now we can just grab the b4 pawn c5 rook a4 the rook looks a bit clumsy but it can hide on a3 it's attacking a6 at the moment y is taking over back to the game bishop c4 played and now knight f4 take take knight f4 just like in the variation before it gives the options of crashing through on g6 the knight can come to d5 which is very useful to deflect the knight on f6 protecting h7 let's continue rook b8 g4 queen f8 this was black's plan of taking on h6 a long time ago moving the rook and queen f8 but is it too late take on g6 was played why not queen g5 Queen g7 is possible and really you're just rubbing it in now. h6 is a nice move, shutting it out and then e5 take take and white can just keep playing on from here. After queen g5 if you go queen e7 maybe take take and knight takes g6 we are crashing through. A stunning variation coming up because after h takes g6 you're not crashing through on g6 right now you play rook h6 which is an amazing move. We have power on the 6th rank and the queen can come in to take on g6 or the rook on g6. Things are just uh, falling apart. You can't defend this at all. If rook b5 then rook g6 or even queen g6 doesn't matter. And then we come in for the other guy. h takes g6 played in the game. The queens come off. Take, take, g5, king g7, double on the h, move the knight, check. And now knight d5, just domination. c6, why well, could just move the knight back. But John goes for a four sequence with knight c7, rook a7 force, and now knight e6 check. King g8, rook g7. Still using this fact, you cannot take the knight on e6 if king e7, knight d4. This is positional domination. After king f8, uh, rook takes g8, cashing in. But perhaps white could maintain the pressure with rook h7. Knight takes c6 and knight e6 are now threats. If rook e8 stopping that, you can take on c6. After rook b7, maybe John wanted more. But in this position, we use the fact that this rook is still attacking f7, threatening mate. So it is possible to go knight takes b4, just completely winning. The knight can come back to d5, just winning. If rook e5 trying to go after the g pawn, then f4 and then knight d5. Even rook takes g8 here is a threat. However, in the game, John chose to go for the rook ending. Knight c6, take, take, rook d1. Rook d5, 6 versus 5 with the better pawn structure. The game will be over very soon. King f8, king d3, put the rook there. White has the better rook, the better king, and the better pawn structure. The king will go to c4. After rook c6, after f4, 
Black resigned, but what if play continued? What if f6 just trying to swap off pawns, increasing your chance for a draw? f5 check is a really cool move. This doesn't force a pass pawn because black can go king f7. If you go g takes f5, then take, and then g6, this is completely winning. With the protected pass pawn, however, king f7, and now take, 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 and this is the point of rook a5. We can drop the rook back with rook a4, attacking a6, and b4. If rook b6, king c4, just taking check, doesn't matter, king b3 and b4 will fall. King e5, rook takes b4, 4 versus 2 and it is all over. Check out one video here and another video over here. If you enjoyed this video, why not like it and subscribe to the channel at the same time.